I think he was drugged. I think he was overserved. I think he was lured over there. Jealousy is such a strange enemy I know. It's all in my head. At this point, police don't suspect foul play in any of these cases and have repeatedly said they're not connected. Just a quick warning, this video will contain explicit content. The video will tell some gruesome details about murder victims and crimes committed by a very disturbed individual. This is not a topic that can be treaded lightly, and as such, viewer discretion is advised. Hello lovelies, it is Monica. You're back with another true crime. I actually have a very good friend and partner to a sister channel as Raven Investigate joining me today on this video as the Raven Dreams. You should really go check him out. He is an amazing narrator. Please go check out all of his channels. You can find him at As the Raven Dreams and Raven Investigates with me. I have completely changed the channel. Eventually, I want to start doing face-to-face -face videos. But tell me what you think in the comments down below. Would you like me to start doing face-to-face -face videos instead of just audio? My name is Monica. Nice to meet you. I usually have gone by Lady Curious, but like I said, I'm rebranding the channel. I hope y'all enjoy this video. It is kind of like the conspiracies and odd things going on surrounding the Austin, Texas Ripper or allegedly serial killer. In my opinion, even before I start this video, I will let you know what that is, is that I really do think something weird is going on down there. I don't think it's just people falling into the lake drowning. So, and I also will tell you some of my theories I have something to think about at the end of the video, but I wanted to go through the best information I could find about the men who have drowned in this lake from 2008 up to date. It's just, I don't know if the lake is cursed or if there is just someone out there drugging men and drowning them. I don't know. It's just, it's so weird and you will see how weird it is the more we talk about it. I will give a little bit of information about the lake and the history, and then we will talk about each person that was found so far in the lake. Also, there is a shoal creek really close to the lake. It's kind of like off of the lake that some men have been found in. And to me, that is like the grounds of the same area that this stuff has been happening on. It just really gives me the creeps. Remember everyone, this video is for educational and documentary purposes only. And everything that I say in this video is, is alleged. Because this supposedly is not an ongoing investigation anymore. You know, because the police department, <laughs> we'll talk about the police department too, is supposedly just closing out the cases and saying, oh, it was an accident, and that's it. There's no really any ongoing investigations. But if there is someone doing this, I want to say it is alleged. This is just to protect myself and my collaborator. Keep that in mind. And I have tried my best to go through all the information online there is so many theories and, and weird stuff that's been put out there that's not true and just the opinion of other people. And it's very hard to kind of get through the facts and opinions. And I try my best. I, I just want to let y'all know that it's not going to be as in-depth because there's some people couldn't even find a photo online of. Some victims, I could not even find a photo, y'all. I am so sorry about that. It's very odd to me because this has happened so recently in the years that usually there's pictures and videos online everywhere of random people, you know, and usually you can find people when you Google them, especially when they have a mysterious death like this. I will stop ranting and get into the video. 
this has been going on in Austin, Texas. Uh, since 2008, there have been many bodies pulled from Ladybird Lake and Shoal Creek in that area. This number has led people to question if all these deaths are really accidental or if there is something more going on. Locals are convinced there is a roofie killer spiking men's drinks with drugs like GHB, known as roofies, before murdering them. Fears a serial killer is on the loose in Texas have soared after the fifth dead body this year, 2023, was pulled out of the lake in Austin. The area of concern is around Rainy Street, leading some to dub that a Rainy Street ripper is roaming the streets at night. But the APD downplayed fears of a murderous villain back in April of 2023 when it poured cold water on serial killer claims made by residents. It said in a statement, there is no evidence in any of these cases to suspect foul play. While each incident has occurred at the lake, the circumstances, exact locations, and demographics surrounding these cases vary. But they do not. I'm letting y'all know. I have made a map, and I'm going to show you that map somewhere in this video that shows that there have been bodies found in the exact same area more than once. How does that happen? That's not a coincidence. But that has not done enough to calm the nerves of a string of locals who are convinced there is a roofie killer spiking men's drinks with drugs and murdering them. The eight people have been found Ladyburg Lake over the last 10 months following nights out on Rainy Street. Most of these have been men in their 30s, leading some to believe a suspicious pattern is emerging. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And there's some other patterns that I have noticed emerging as well. And it has not slowed down, y'all. We will start with some background into the lake. It is known as Lady Burke Lake. Many people refer it to as Town Lake. There are some comments that said it is actually a river and not a lake. But the internet says that it's like a river reserver. The Lake River is on the Colorado River in Austin, Texas. The surface area is 416 acres. That is huge, y'all. It is now used for recreation and flood control. Supposedly, there's no motorized watercrafts and boats and stuff on the lake. You're only allowed to paddleboard or kayak or canoe. The lake is said to be calm and is popular for many rowing teams to use. There are also comments that said the lake is quite polluted. And that is why swimming is not allowed. But supposedly, apparently, this is a rumor. But I don't know, because swimming was prohibited due to many drownings, as well as debris in the water from bridges and dams. Swimming was banned in the river since 1964. And if you do go swimming, you can be fined up to $500. In 2019, the blue toxic green algae was found in the lake and up to five dogs were killed because of it. So this is like a cesspool. The ban on the consumption of fish caught in the lake was issued by the city of Austin in 1990 as a result of high levels of chlordane found in the fish. The use of chlordane as a pesticide was banned in the United States in 1988 and the chemicals stick strongly to soil particles and continue to pollute groundwater for years after its application. The ban of the consumption of fish caught in the lake was finally lifted in 1999. We will now go through all the men who were found to date in the lake. Now, I went back to 2008. First suspicious death that was found in the lake was Rihad Hamed. He was a school teacher. As the Raven Dreams will read more about him, I do want to put in my thoughts about this man. They supposedly said that it was a suicide, y'all. Like, what the fuck? Who duct tapes their arms and legs together and mouth and throws themselves into a fucking lake? Riyadh Hamad. Riyadh was a school teacher and peace activist who was reported missing by his family on Monday, April 14th, 2008. His car was found in a lot on the south side of Ladybird Lake. On Wednesday, April 16th, 2008, Riyadh's body was found floating in the lake. 
His eyes had been covered with duct tape, his legs and hands had also been found bound with duct tape. According to Austin Police Department Sergeant Joe Chacon, the death of Austin school teacher and peace activist Riyad Hamad remains under investigation. Chacon says homicide investigators are open to all possibilities, but that the initial investigation reflects that Hamad appears to have committed suicide. Hamad had been reported missing by his family on Monday night, April 14th, and partly by means of cell phone GPS search authorized by his wife, his car was found Tuesday afternoon in a parking lot off South Lakeshore Boulevard, on the south side of Lady Bird Lake. A land and water search turned up nothing more, but a little after 2 p.m. on Wednesday, passerby on the hike and bike trail on the opposite north side of the lake, just east of the I-35 bridge, spotted a body floating near the shore. Hamad's eyes were covered in duct tape. His legs and hands were also bound, fueling internet-amplified rumors that he had been murdered. According to a report that day by KXAN-TV News, parkgoers who saw the body said the death did not look accidental. They said the man's face was wrapped with duct tape, and his arms appeared to be tied in front of his body. On Thursday, April 17th, APD released a statement saying that the binding of his hands and legs and placement of the tape were consistent with Ahmad having done this to himself. Shakan told the Chronicle that additional evidence, including a security videotape of the parking area where Hamad's car was found, and statements from persons who knew him, that he had been experiencing suicidal thoughts, also support a finding of suicide, but that police are waiting for completion of the entire investigation, including the full autopsy and toxicology report, which will take several weeks. For all intents and purposes, as far as we know right now, Chacon said this week, this was a suicide. An autopsy was performed by Travis County Chief Medical Examiner David Dolanock, generating yet another controversy over official autopsy procedures. On April 17th, when Hamad's body was transported by a funeral home from the medical examiner's office to the Islamic Center of Greater Austin on Manor Road, said Imam Ibrahim Jamali, it was in a barbaric condition one that he had never seen in 20 years of preparing bodies for burial. Dramali said the body was seeping blood from one incision and was inadequately sutured, and in spots the flesh was torn as though an animal might have attacked him. He said two experienced colleagues working with him panicked at the sight of the corpse and left the room, and he had to use towels and tape to clean Hamad's body and to pad the brain cavity and the torso in order to make it presentable for burial. He demanded and received a meeting with Dolanok and APD chief Art Acevedo. Afterward, Dramali and Dolanok each told the Chronicle that they believed the meeting was useful and should lead to better medical examiner practices, but Dramali said that he cannot accept the apology offered by Dolanok for any misunderstanding or mistakes. Quote, I believe they were sending us a message, he said, and that's what I told the people here at the mosque that they believe they do not have to respect the body of Muslims. Asked about Jamali's charges, Dalinek said that, although there may have been some misunderstanding over his office's expectations, that the funeral home would be doing the final cosmetic preparations of the body, he insisted, we did absolutely nothing on our part to show any intentional disrespect. He said they followed standard autopsy procedures and that he simply can't say what Jamali may have experienced in similar situations before. In most cases, all of the final preparations of the body occur at a funeral home, he said. But as in any religion, there is a whole spectrum of practices, depending on the family's wishes. We will certainly try to work with the local Muslim clerics better on the next case. Dolanek also could not confirm what Jamali described as apparent facial bruising on the body. Hamad, who was originally from Lebanon but had also lived in Austin for more than 30 years, taught business education and keyboarding at small middle school, was a graduate student at UT, already with several degrees, and was very active in Austin-based charity work aimed at easing living conditions in the occupied territories of Palestine, most specifically via the Palestine Children's Welfare Fund, through which he sold Palestinian crafts to raise funds for destitute Palestinian families. He was also very outspoken about international politics, 
objecting strongly to Israeli and U.S. policy in the Middle East. Partly, as a consequence, he had been investigated by federal authorities, who asked questions of some of his neighbors and, in February, the FBI and IRS raided his South Austin home and seized 40 boxes of material related to his charity work, reportedly pursuant to an investigation of alleged wire fraud, bank fraud, and money laundering. Although no charges had been brought, the raid greatly disrupted Hamad's charity work. Because of this background and circumstances of his death, there was immediate, but unsubstantiated, internet speculation that Hamad had been assassinated, perhaps by U.S. or Israeli authorities. Imam Jamali also rejected outright the tentative APD finding of suicide. Quote, I don't believe it. Islam expressly forbids it, and this man had two wonderful children and everything to live for. Beyond this general suspicion, Jamali declined to speculate who might have murdered Hamad. In an April 22nd radio interview with Austin conspiracy monger Alex Jones, Jamali declined to join in Jones' ghoulish fantasies of Hamad's possible torture, beating, gunshot, or stab wounds, and instead confined himself only to describe the visible condition of Hamad's body. No federal indictment had been issued against Hamad, but according to Sergeant Greg Moss, APD missing persons investigator, Hamad's wife mentioned the FBI investigation as having placed great emotional stress on him, and as a reason for being particularly concerned when he went missing, that he might be tempted to do harm to himself. Apparently, the last phone call Hamad made from his cell phone on the night of April 14th was to his Palestine Children's Welfare Fund colleague, Paul LaRudy, in California. According to LaRudy, Hamad somewhat oddly revisited matters he'd already addressed by email. He also seemed anxious to get off the phone, said LaRudy, but that was typical for Hamad. In a letter posted online, LaRudy said that he told Hamad of Reason's large donation. After the FBI raid, LaRudy had taken on a larger role in administering the charity, and Hamad had carefully handed over all administrative details in the last few weeks. Hamad responded with only, Well, that's nice, gotta go. LaRudy subsequently told a Houston Indy Media radio interviewer that whatever the police investigation eventually concludes, quote, I don't believe it will put an end to the speculation. LaRudy believes Hamad deliberately decided to throw suspicion on his perceived enemies. He added that whatever actually happened to Hamad, that he refused to allow the government to take away control of his life. I don't agree with his decision because he could have done a lot more, but I still think he was a hero. End quote. The police, it is the audacity. And this is my opinion. Do not sue me, please stake in. But this is my opinion. And I'm allowed to say it. And it doesn't mean it's true. It's just what I feel and think after reading all this. The police department really screwed up. They have really, really dropped the ball on this. And it is heartbreaking. I don't know if, like, since they know there's an active serial killer, that they're just saying this to the public to keep investigating. That's why I said that they say there's no in open investigations, allegedly. There might be. So I have to protect myself from the things that I say. But if there isn't, they really fucked up. Because even me, just a regular civilian, can see there are so many patterns. That this cannot be a coincidence. This cannot be, oh, yeah, there was such a jump and spike in deaths in the lake in 2021, uh, 2023. It just, oh, it's happening. It's just happening. Yeah, it's just, it's normal. No, it's not normal. It's not. And you will see what I mean. When we go through all these men in the days they passed away, you will know what I'm talking about. That it cannot just be a coincidence. Now, where all these men are found and near the lake, there is like a historic district and there's also a lot of bars and a lot of these men go missing when supposedly they were with friends and they got really drunk and then they would just disappear and then they're found in a lake later. That's just weird. To me, I feel like someone is luring them out to the lake and using something to drug them. But if not, they're so drunk. Maybe they're out there having a good time and then someone's just drowning them. 
and it's one, two, three in the morning and people wouldn't be out there anyways because it's so late and then people know you're not allowed to swim in the lake. So why would people be out there having fun and stuff? So they know it's a great area where there won't be people and then they could drown people and no one would hear it. To me, it's, it's, it's really scary. The next person that passed away that is like in stone that we know of is Cole Christensen. It was October 13th, 2012. Now, that is a jump from 2008 to 2012. But the thing is, is that Cole was from Alaska. He was down visiting and he was found in Shoal Creek, the little creek that runs off of Lady Berkeley. He passed away October 13th, 2012, and he was on vacation. More about Christian is he spent countless nights tearing apart jet skis, motorcycles, and any other toys he thought he could customize. Cole truly lived life to the fullest. There was nothing that could stop him from doing something he loved. Cole was a definition of a daredevil. Cole loved his family and friends more than anything else. He surrounded himself with amazing people who had the same values as he did. Cole spent much of his time with his family and friends at his cabin on Big Lake. Big Lake was his favorite place to be. He loved sitting by the campfire, wakeboarding, jet skiing, and anything that he had to do with water. Austin Police Department spokesman Jennifer said Christian's death had been ruled not suspicious, and the department will not conduct any further investigation. Sarah Scott, Chief Administration Officer for the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office, said Christensen's cause of death is still unknown. Her office is awaiting the results of toxicology testing on his body, which could take six to eight weeks. His body was found at 11.10 that morning by a Austin Music Hall employee. Scott said Christensen was laying in Shoal Creek behind Austin Music Hall located Christian was a former student of the University of Alaska, Anchorage. One of Christensen's friends said that Christian was a big hockey fan and was funny, popular, and kind. He made a lot of people laugh, and he had a really big smile. He treated everybody really well and was really kind to everybody that he knew. So, supposedly Christian's death is undetermined to this day. The next man that we will talk about is Iran David Rublik. He was actually found floating in Lady Burke Lake, October 13th, 2004, 14, so this is two years later. Do you see what I'm getting at? 2008, 2012, 2014, it like ramps up. Supposedly, he went missing on Thursday, October 9th. He had been out with friends in Austin and called an Uber to get him home from Rainy Street. The driver dropped him instead off near a Holiday Inn on Interstate 35 at around 2.30 a.m. on Friday, October 10th. Weird. Police stated that they believed he was walking close to the water and somehow fell in. Police eventually determined that Iran's cause of two fishermen discovered his body floating in the water. On Saturday, several people spotted the body floating in the water. Please do not suspect foul play. They're looking for people who were with him Thursday night or any witness who may have seen him early Friday morning. Police are also waiting for toxicology reports. Police have not released any details regarding the circumstances that led to his drowning, but said that they have no evidence of trauma when he was pulled from the lake. Well, exactly. If someone says, hey, let's go in the lake or hey or double dog dares him to get in the lake or and then goes out there and drowns him yeah there would be no trauma to his body or if he was drugged and pulled into the lake there would be no trauma to his body it really really upsets me the next person is julio santos III. he was only 22 years old he died june 7th 2015 and that's a year later. You see how it's it's progressing more and more and more. As the Raven Dreams will be reading this one about him, and you will get to know more about his death. Julio Santos the Third, twenty-two, was found in Ladybird Lake on June seventh, two thousand and fifteen. Julio was last seen at a dance club called Barbarella on Friday, June fifth, at around two thirty a.m. The following information is from the police press release. 
Santos was reported as a missing person on Friday, June 5th, 2015, at 5.58 p.m. and was last seen at East 6th Street and Red River Street at approximately 2.30 a.m. on Friday, June 5th, 2015. The medical examiner's office reported no suspicious trauma to the body. Austin police are continuing to investigate this death as not suspicious. His life was cut short. While his death certificate says drowning, Raymond doesn't agree. I think he was drugged. I think he was overserved. I think he was lured over there, she said. She says any sight of the lake can be triggering. I picture him being scared and not knowing what to do, and being hurt. And I just imagine the worst, she said. That's what we always call it. It's not Lady Bird, it's not Town Lake. It's the Death River. At an Austin City Council meeting on April 13th, family members of the others who disappeared or were found dead in the lake called for more safety measures. I think they're connected. They're too much the same to be a coincidence, Raymond said. The city says at this point there's no evidence of foul play in any of the cases. It's like APD is reading from a script, and it's the exact same things. And if they were different, why would they be saying the exact same things? And so yes, I think they're all connected, Raymond said. And city Council passed a resolution that calls on the city manager to come up with a safety plan, including exploring the capacity to have park rangers patrol and EMS stationed on the trailhead. The city manager is also tasked with looking into halo cameras for the area and working with bars to prevent over-serving of alcohol. Raymond says that she wants to see clear action, not just talk. If they are adopting resolutions to pacify, that's not enough. If they're going to adopt a resolution and take ten years to do it, that is not enough. So far, all we've received are empty promises, she said. We should be able to have fun and not worry about our loved ones being found in the river and being told, oh, they just drink too much. There are already temporary lights and fencing up, and the city says the permanent infrastructure plan is in the works. Raymond says that she hopes the momentum keeps going. This seems to be bigger. There's a lot more attention, she said. I hope that it won't fizzle out again. I hope it doesn't. In Austin, Texas, Julio Santos went missing in June of 2015, and as stated was last seen on East 6th and Red River Street. Only five days later, his body was found in Lady Bird Lake. For the first time, his sister was speaking out and says that she's been in contact with other families who have had similar events happening to their loved ones. It's an open wound, and when it happens to other young men, it opens that wound up even more. And it's starting all over again, Santos's older sister, Melanie Raymond, said. Raymond is the oldest of the three siblings. He had his whole life ahead of him. He had just graduated from North Texas State University, and he was on his way to Seattle to start his life. And that was cut short, Raymond says. She says that she's always had a gut feeling that the circumstances surrounding her 22-year-old brother's death were off. She says the toxicology report only showed alcohol in his system, but of all things, his belt was missing. Everything else was intact. I don't think it was an accident. I don't think he slipped. I think he was meeting someone, she says. After hearing what happened to Martin Gutierrez and Christian Pugh, the similarities were more apparent to Raymond. Honestly, I think they're being drugged. I think it's something toxicology isn't looking for on a basic panel. I think they're lured somewhere, and I think that's when they go missing and they're subsequently found. Raymond said. Julio was amazing, and loved by so many people. So many people reached out when he went missing, and he touched a lot of people's lives. We want to know what's happening, Raymond said. She also mentioned that APD closed Santos's case and ruled his death was accidental years ago. On November 29, 2015, Santiago Gonzalez Vesira, who was 23, was pulled from the lake. He had been missing for a few days, 
Medical examiners reported no suspicious trauma to the body. The cause of death has not yet been determined. He was found floating in Lady Burke Lake on Sunday. And he was a University of Texas student. The loss of Santiago is devastating to our entire university. We express our deepest sympathies to his family and friends. Santiago was a graduate business student in the accounting professional program was reported missing by his sister on Thursday. He was found dead Sunday in the lake near 2800 block of Stratford Lane. Cause of manner of death is still undetermined pending a toxicology report, according to the medical examiner's office. Person traveling by canoe found Santiago's body floating. Police are investigating the man's death, but said it did not appear suspicious. His sister reported him missing on November 26th, Thanksgiving, to the University of Texas Police Department. So, this man was only 23. He was going to the University of Texas, and he went missing on Thanksgiving. And he wasn't found three days later in the lake. Just, that's crazy to me. Y'all, that's so crazy to me that it's like, poof, they just go missing. And then, boom, they're found in the lake. And like the police said, not suspicious, no trauma to his body. I'm being very sarcastic right now because this really pisses me off of the injustice these men are getting. The injustice of it all. Supposedly, there was another man found, but his information was not released on December 28, 2016. And he was found in the exact same location as Iran was last seen. Mm -hmm. And then on June 14th, 2018, a man was pulled from the lake. A passerby spotted the clothed body laying face down in the water. His information is not released. On August 15th, 2018, another man in his 40s was pulled from the water. And like always before everyone else, he said that the APD said there was no evidence for the scene and did not indicate that the death was suspicious. Or homicidal in nature. The next person we're going to talk about is Christopher White. He was pulled out of the lake on October 11th, 2018. Christopher was actually from Minnesota and had been visiting Austin to attend Austin City Limits Music Festival with friends. The group attended the music festival on Friday and returned to their rental home near the Colorado River Friday night. Friends reported they last saw Chris between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. Saturday morning, and that he mentioned he might want to go down to the dock, but none of them actually saw him leave the home. He was reportedly intoxicated. Friends realized Christopher was missing when they woke up Saturday morning and reporting him missing later that day. He had left his shoes, phone, and wallet behind. When Chris was found, authorities said that there was no evidence of foul play. Chris's cause of death was eventually determined to be accidental drowning. Toxicology testing on Chris's blood showed traces of ethanol, cocaine, and MDMA. So, MDMA is usually known as the date rape drug. Well, that's so weird. Why would he just leave his house without his shoes and his wallet and all that? That is so weird to me. And he was only 25. All these men so far range from their early 20s to 40s and less 40 but more around 23 to 35. On December 7th a man named Randy Lexfold was found in Shoal Creek likely drowned by blunt forced injuries likely from falling from a bridge into the water contributed to his death according to an autopsy report released this week. Randy was only 48 years old, and supposedly his death is still undetermined. Get this, he was visiting his daughter in California. From California at the time, so she had a USA Junior National Swimming Competition, which was being held at the University of Texas. So he was there to watch his daughter, and he just happened to be at the same freak and fell off the bridge and had blunt force trauma from falling off a bridge. Get out of here. Investigators could not determine how Randy ended up in the water, but they do believe he fell off the 6th Street Bridge. 
It's unclear whether he simply fell, was pushed, was hit by a car, knocked over, or whether he jumped. Thus, the manner of death is undetermined. Boston police have said foul play is not suspected. They just keep saying that, don't they? They don't believe that his death was involved in a robbery because he was found with his valuables on him. Someone saw Randy's body partially submerged around 8.30 a.m. on December 7th and alerted the police. So, supposedly his body had excessive blunt force trauma consisted with the fall. He had several broken bones and his head, torso, arms, and legs, particularly on his right side of his body. And he was covered in scrapes and bruises. His lungs were filled with fluid, which led the pathologist who conducted the autopsy to determine that he drowned. For Lori Faber, Randy's sister, the recent deaths brought flashbacks of the horrifying time when she learned her brother's death and reminded her that her fight for justice is far from over. The sister has now criticized law enforcement, accusing them of not revealing the truth and telling the families in public that these water deaths are all accidents and that none of the victims had any trauma. See, it's not just me that thinks something's weird going on. We did not know Randy had gone missing until the morning of December 7th, 2018, when he did not respond to the text. At the time, we did not know he had been found dead in Shoal Creek because he had not yet been identified. He was found by the Shoal Creek Bridge on 6th Street. The Shoal Creek feeds into Ladybird Lake, which isn't far away. She got a call informing her of the death around 7 p.m. on the same day. One thing that APD did not do that was very upsetting to her is they did not contact my parents until 10 days after Randy's death. My family learned of his death from my brother's wife. I guess I was wrong to think that the police would contact the victim's parents right away to tell them what happened and possibly offer their condolences. Apparently, this detective thought it was not necessary to talk to Randy's parents to offer condolences or to ask them questions to find out more about him. The Travis County Medical Examiner listed the official cause of death as drowning. First report from APD on digital media was that the condition of his body was bad and they could not identify his age, race, or gender. Really? That sounds like he was beat up. We were also told by a detective that Randy had a head wound that was hemorrhaging when he went over the bridge. And the head wound most likely caused him to go unconscious before he fell into the creek and drowned. Hello? That contradicts everything. The wound in his head turned out being a deep puncture wound that, according to the autopsy report, caused blood around one of the membranes of the brain. So my question is, how did he get the deep puncture wound that hemorrhaged and made him go unconscious before drowning? She added, he also had other very bad injuries that did not match up with the narrative that they were being told. He had a broken right collarbone, broken right thumb, broken ribs in both sides, and also front and back, and a badly broken femur. A thought would not cause his ribs to be broken on both sides and front and back. His ribs and front were broken so badly that the autopsy report stated them as being misshapen, which was also very noticeable with our family viewed the body. Also, what was the frothy substance in Randy's lungs? That is not something that is formed by air and water. Bridge is only 20 feet high, and there was some water from rainfall the night before. You can't understand how his ribs would be broken so badly. They would also be broken on one side, not both sides, and front and back. Also, his femur bone was broken so badly that when our family viewed the body, the leg was bent at an angle from rigor mortis. I found out it takes 1,000 pounds of force to break the femur bone, and I know a fall of 20 feet into some water does not produce enough force to do that. The detective had also told us that due to this trajectory of the body, Randy was not a victim of a hit and run. I also had another expert read the autopsy report and it stated Randy's eyes was being translucent. The expert told me that this only happens when the eyes have been exposed to air after death, which could not happen if he died face down in the water like we were told. There were numerous areas in the report that couldn't be overlooked. First, the date next to the medical examiner's name had been wrong and was written over it to correct it. Not with without first at all, which didn't seem very professional to me. 
Secondly, the wrong creek name was listed in the location of the incident, and it was later changed by an amendment to the report. The first creek name listed was Waller Creek, is actually where a previous victim had been located. Thirdly, it named the wrong arm for Randy's only tattoo. With all of these mistakes so easily noticeable on the report, it really began to look like it had started out as a different victim's autopsy report, and the medical, medical examiner just copied and pasted some other details onto it. It is my opinion, but it's partially based on facts. Is anyone policing the medical examiner's office to make sure they are reporting true and accurate results? His sister questioned. His sister said Randy did not live in Texas and had flown into Austin on December 6th for a business meeting. He was also there to watch his daughter in a swim meet. Randy was a brilliant software engineer who did software development. He didn't have a main desk location for his work and would travel a lot in different locations as needed. And one of the businesses he worked for was Agile Craft based in Austin. Agile Craft was a software development company for artificial intelligence, homeland security, and other well-known high-end companies. So that meant Randy also had a high government security clearance. His sister said, I know Randy was supposed to meet a friend that evening before he disappeared, but the friend did not show up. Randy went to the rooftop on December 6th for dinner and a couple of drinks. Their listed hours show that they don't open until 9 p.m. and Randy left there before 10.30 p.m. According to his online credit card receipt, that was the last time he was seen anywhere and he did not show up in any camera footage around the city or from any other establishments. He was found the next morning at 8.30 a.m. face down in Shoal Creek. Someone working at the nearby location saw him in the water from the window of their office. The Shoal Creek Bridge is almost a mile from where Randy was last seen. We later learned that he apparently had texted a friend around 1.30 a.m., but how do we know it was really him that did the texting? How do we know it wasn't someone else texting from Randy's phone? She added. On being asked what she believes she believes may have really happened to Randy, he said, I believe he was targeted, drugged, kidnapped, and severely beaten, punctured above his eye near his brain for some unknown reason, and drowned before he was thrown over the bridge into the creek. The blood in his body was settled in the wrong place for someone who died with his face down. There was also a smiley face sticker on the bridge railing with a thick red line drawn on it above the right eye, exactly where the puncture room was to my brother's head. His lungs had a frothy substance in it and were also hemorrhaging because his ribs were so badly broken. She also revealed that a GoFundMe memorial page was being made by someone two days before her brother's death, which proves that he was being targeted. Well, that's really creepy. I have been following and studying the details of many cases with very similar circumstances and all our young men who have found dead in the water. The thing is that the same thing is happening in many other cities too and is not only just confined to Austin. They have suspended this case and they are no longer investigating at this time. We tried showing you evidence that someone started a memorial page for my brother two days before his death but you wouldn't even look at it. Where is a family member supposed to go and what are we supposed to do when the police won't look at hard evidence? His sister has faith and determination. The only way to fight the bad is with good. So stick to the truth and keep fighting for it because we believe that together and with the help of God above, the truth shall show itself. She misses her brother every single day. We were only 13 months apart in age and we were inseparable as kids. We did everything together. We also looked very much alike and people always thought we were twins so that made us also want to dress alike sometimes adulthood took us to different parts of the country but we always had a very special connection between us after randy died i had a dream every night for a month in my dream randy was in the water of the creek and he told me to keep looking into this because they're trying to make this look like something that it's not that has proven to be true it is so hard to publicly talk about my brother's case because there are so many skeptics out there just waiting for a chance to criticize me. They think that if my brother was drugged, the medical examiner would have found the drug in his system. The autopsy reports show 
they don't test for those kind of drugs. They also think if there was foul play, APD would say so. And yet, that is not the case. They think the police would never tell the truth to the public, but that is exactly what is happening. And I have solid proof backing up what I am saying. That is Randy's sister. And I believe everything that she's saying, y'all. It is devastating that the police so far is turning a blind eye on what's happening in their city. I don't know if they're trying to cover someone's ass or what's going on, but something's going on. And they're not protecting the people. The next person, I know, I feel like I'm a broken record. The next person is Jake Waltrip. He was 28 when he passed away. They found him in the lake August 4th, 2019. He was found near Holiday Inn where Iran was found in 2016. The body was found by Kaggers who towed the man to shore. Jake lived in Austin and Denton before moving to Orange County, California for two years and working at Luma Prince. In 2018, he moved back to Texas and started computer coding Austin Coding Academy and received his full stack Java web development certification this year. After doing some contract work, he recently began working for Mathalicious, a website with real world math lessons for middle and high school teachers to use in their classes. He was very excited about this job and was very optimistic for his future. Growing up, he enjoyed riding, driving the golf cart, and shooting targets out in the country at Grandma and Grandpa's, and shooting at the gun range with his dad, and at Uncle Paul's house with all the guys and some of the ladies. As he grew older, he became very philosophical and greatly enjoyed reading and watching and discussing podcasts about life and what is true and important. He also loved being outdoors and running, riding his bike around the lake, kayaking and camping out in his tent, chilling in his hammock. He was young, so he just moved back to Texas. And then he was found dead, randomly, in the lake and near where other people have been found dead. That's not a coincidence, y'all. So the third person that was found in the exact same location. There's not too much info on this person, and it makes me very sad, but it was... Eric Medrano, he was 26. He was found dead May 24th, 2021. And the only information I have about him is that the police said that it wasn't a suspicious death, like all the effing rest of them. The next person was Rocal Rosara Lopez. He was last seen New Year's Day of 2022. In the very early morning in Austin, a friend made this post on Facebook. Help us find him. Y'all, my coworker has been missing since the evening of December 31st. Last known place was celebrating New Year's in downtown Austin. Family and our staff are worried about him. His cell phone is off. No credit cards have been used. And he has not been active on any social media. There is a missing person out on him with APD already. He wasn't pulled out of the lake until January 6th of 2022. There's really not much more information about his autopsy report or what the police thought or anything. I just think it's so weird that there's lack of information about all these people. I have drowned in this lake. It's like they're trying to hide the info. The next person that we're going to talk about is Ricky Parks. He died on July 14th, 2022. He was found dead Thursday morning in Lady Bird Lake. Supposedly no foul play was involved and the investigation is closed and that supposedly he was in the lake for about a couple of days. That's it. I want to say Ricky Parks is one of them. But I can't even find a picture of him online. And this happened in 2022, y'all. Everyone leaves digital footprints these days. Everyone. And that just, boom, blows my mind like I came and wrap my head around it. The next person will be read by... As the Raven Dreams, it was Martin Gutierrez. He passed away December 10th, 2022. Do you get what I'm saying? That it is progressing. 30% for like 100. December 10th, 2022, Martin Gutierrez. An Austin man who was found dead November 26th in Ladybird Lake, a week after he was reported missing, drowned. 
according to an autopsy report released Monday. The Travis County Medical Examiner listed the official cause of death for Martin Maurice Gutierrez, 25, as drowning, adding that his death was an accident. The autopsy doesn't shed any light on how Gutierrez might have ended up in the lake after he was last seen November 19th, leaving a rainy street bar. He'd gone out with friends on a Sunday night, and loved ones called police when they couldn't find him the next day. Austin Police, Travis County Search and Rescue, and Gutierrez's family searched Rainy Street and the Ann and Roy Butler hike and bike trail for several days to no avail. Finally, four days after Thanksgiving, his body was found floating in the water, wearing the same clothing he had on when he was last seen, the autopsy report said. His toxicology results showed that he was likely intoxicated at the time of his death, the report said. Gutierrez worked as an assistant manager at One Main Financial. He was originally from Big Spring and had lived in Austin for 11 months. His older brother, Michael Gutierrez, told the American Statesman while he was still searching, quote, If you knew him, he's just perfect. There's not a bad bone in his body. If I could take his place, I would. Martin's body was found in Lady Bird Lake, and Martin's brother made a statement at the time. Martin was the brother I could go to for everything, and now he's gone. I'm lost with no idea what direction to go from here. My family, friends, and community have come together in a way I never believed was possible in an effort to help me find him. This world will always and forever be significantly less happy without Martin Gutierrez. Martin's cause of death was determined after autopsy to be accidental drowning. According to the toxicology reports, he was intoxicated when he died of accidental drowning, but no illicit or prescription drugs were found in his system. Austin police have confirmed they did not suspect foul play in Martin's death. After him, as the Raven Dreams will also talk about Josu Moreno. He died on Christmas of 2022. December 25th, 2022, Josu Moreno. An Austin man was charged with murder after a shooting on December 19th that led to another man crashing his truck into Ladybird Lake and thus dying of a gunshot wound to the head, according to police documents. Joel Santiago Gonzalez Perón, 18, has been charged in the death of Josu Moreno, 45, in the early morning of December 19th. According to the arrest warrant affidavit, Gonzalez Perón said that he thought someone else was in the truck that Moreno was operating that ended up crashing into the lake. The Austin Police Department responded to a 911 call around 3.30 a.m. about a crash in the 1100 block of West Riverside Drive, the affidavit said. Further, the caller reported hearing several gunshots, followed by a vehicle crashing through the guardrail and going over the bridge. According to police documents, Gonzalez Perron and a group of others went to the park at 1100 block of West Riverside Drive to confront another individual with whom they had a problem. That other person was at the park with another group of people. When Gonzalez Perron and his group arrived at the park, Gonzalez Perron made the other man exit their vehicle by gunpoint. People in the other man's group eventually fled by foot and in their vehicles after a number of rounds were fired, per documents. Gonzalez Perron told APD that he and another person in his group shot at a man running away from them on foot and at three vehicles which included Moreno's truck. They did so as they exited the park on West Riverside Drive. Per documents, Gonzalez Perron said that he fired a single shot at the black truck that Moreno was driving, and that he thought the truck belonged to members of the group with which they had a problem. After firing the shot at Moreno's truck, Gonzalez Perron told police that he watched the vehicle crash into the bridge. It is not clear from the police documents whether Moreno had any connections with the two groups at the park. After that, on December 28, 2022, Kyle Thornton was found in Lady Bird Lake near the Congress Avenue Bridge Wednesday afternoon. Someone called 911 and reported there was a body in the water. There was no foul play suspected. That's it. That's all I know about Kyle Thornton. That's all I could find. It's just so odd to me. So odd to me. And the only ones that have a lot of info is when 
the family talks to the public and says, no, I don't care what the police are saying. There is something else going on. And this is the same case for Jason John. He was 30 and he went missing on February 5th, 2023. He was last seen walking on Rainy Street. He had previously been on a night out with friends. Jason could be seen on CCTV for 10 minutes before he dropped out of sight due to the lack of cameras in the area. His body was found on February 13th. That was like more than a week later. Police said that Jason had no visible injuries on him when he was recovered. Jason's body was found in the same area where Martin Gutierrez was found. The medical examiners ruled John's death as accident and that he died from drowning. The autopsy report says John was seen by a witness vomiting by the bank of the lake and then falling in. The witness tried to help them and then called 911. Law enforcement responded but was unable to find John at the time. Toxicology results showed John had consumed alcohol before his death. But there were no illicit substances or medications found in his blood. According to the report, John's body was found on February 13th. He was found completely dressed with all of his personal property, including his wallet and phone in his pockets, according to the autopsy report. John had been last seen leaving Rainy Street after a night out with friends. John's death renewed calls for more security, better lighting, and cameras along the trail by the lake. The family of Jason John, whose body was found in the lake in February believes these incidents could be connected. Even though the autopsy report states John's death was an accidental drowning, we definitely don't agree with that, said John's mother. John was 30. He mentioned Jonathan Honey's death and said there were some similarities in the case. It's very, very concerning. Mino says that she's worried about university and Texas students who go out on Rainy Street. I know that there have been some comments on social media that is just alcohol related. And I believe it's definitely more than that. Definitely more than that. Well, I think the first thing you start with is the cause of death. What is accidental or not? It appears to be something that was done intentionally. And then secondly, is there any communality? If these are acts that appear to be intentional, is there any similar method or motive that could be a plate here? John had no significant internal or external injuries, and that there were no fractures or traumatic injuries found, according to his autopsy report. Everyone's saying they need to just have lots of barriers around the lake, and there needs to be a 24-hour patrol around the lake. I have been there in nighttime, and there is nothing that is being done. It is very dark, and you can't see anything once you enter, enter the trails. The city is budgeting nearly a million dollars to provide long-term safety improvements. This includes a new camera at the trailhead, more lighting, and sidewalks along East Avenue, which are expected to be installed by the summer. All these people had to die before they realized, oh, well, maybe we need to do something about it. In recent months, we have seen the Austin police kind of going up and down the trail with their horses, but yeah. With this back, it's definitely does concern me that they are not able to find out who's doing this. I feel there is a connection and there's something going on at Lady Bird Lake and the police are choosing not to do anything about it. They need to take action. People are hurting out there. The Austin Police Department is aware of speculations regarding the recent drownings at Lady Bird Lake. Although these cases are still under investigation and evidence is being analyzed at this time, there's no evidence in any of these cases to support allegations of foul play. While each incident had occurred at the lake, the circumstances, exact locations, and demographics surrounding these cases vary. Our investigators approach every case with an open mind and objectively examine all available evidence. We work closely with the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office, which conducts a parallel investigation into all deaths. The medical examiners perform the autopsies in each of these types of death investigations. The results of these autopsies have not revealed any trauma to the bodies nor indication of foul play. One common theme of the drowning in Austin this year is a combination of alcohol and easy access to Lady Bird Lake, which has numerous access points. Many of the points can be challenging to see at night. The parks in which most of these drownings have occurred are parks areas that are closed at 10 p.m. and occur after the park closes. We advise the public to follow the rules of park closures. I don't believe what the police say at all. And it is infuriating. Infuriating. Do you not know that also it could be that someone is drugging these men? 
And that is what's leading them into the lakes. And the bodies are not fresh. So whatever drugs were in their system could easily be out of their bodies. And some drugs don't even show up in the body. The next person is Clifton Axel. He was 40. He went missing February 25th, 2023. This is going to be covered by As the Rape and Dreams. The next person we will be talking about is Jonathan Honey. He passed away April 1st, 2023, was 33 years old, and supposedly the medical examiner office said he died from drowning and was classified as accidental. Honey was in town for a bachelor party from Washington, D.C. when he reportedly went missing on March 31st. The Austin Police Department said he was drinking when he went to find food, after which he was reported missing. And as usual, the police said there was no foul play in either case of Honey's and John's. Um, yeah, that's just so sad. Supposedly, the city started by adding solar lighting, increased park patrols, and will be adding cameras and more permanent lighting in the future. And it's still under investigation. People who hang out on Rainy Street were shocked to hear about the discovery Saturday afternoon of Jonathan Honey after the 33-year-old went missing seen at a taco truck on Rainy Street around 2 a.m. Friday, March 31st, and they're still investigating how he died. I am thinking maybe somebody who drank too much and fell, but if it's somebody really doing harm, it's concerning. This was from a local woman that was visiting. We were told they are unable to comment because of the ongoing investigation. His toxicology report showed there was alcohol in his system. He had no drugs in his system consistent with over-the-counter or prescribed medications. Clifton Axtell, 40, went missing on February 25th, 2023. His body was then found on March 5th. Water rescue were called for a reported body in the water on Ladybird Lake. Rescue crews located the victim and obtained a deceased on scene pronouncement of an adult patient. No other information was available at the time. Some info about Clifton straight from his obituary. Clifton Axtell, a beautiful, bright ball of energy, came into this world on September 29, 1982, in Plano, Texas. He was a son, brother, husband, father, nephew, uncle, and grandson. Cliff loved his family deeply. He departed this earth on March 5th, 2023, and will be profoundly missed by all who love him. The body of 40-year-old Clifton Axtell was found washed up near the lake on March 5th, 2023. He had vanished from his wife and two children just days prior, but the medical examiner stated that his cause of death was undetermined. It was stated that he may have fallen or entered the water, or had a natural event near the water according to the medical examiner's report. First responders were called on the morning of March 5th, and Clifton Axtell, 40, was pronounced dead at the scene. It's unclear how the man entered the water as it was an unwitnessed event. Unfortunately, there are often no specific findings at autopsy to confirm drowning as the cause of death, the report said, adding it is often dependent on case circumstances. Because it didn't have more information on those circumstances, it is stated that the official cause and manner of death were best certified as undetermined. The report stated the medical examiner's opinion would be updated if new information became available. Austin police previously said the death is not being investigated as suspicious. The report referenced medical records obtained from a February 23, 2023 visit that stated the man had severe depression, though he denied suicidal ideation. It is also mentioned that this visit happened days prior to him being reported missing. According to an online obituary, Axtell worked in Austin as a land specialist and loved his family deeply. We will miss his compassion, wit, kindness, and capacity to capture beauty and truth in his art. He loved writing and playing music. Cliff had the ability to energize the room with his fierce intellect and creativity. I would like to add, due to the suicidal nature of this story, if you or someone you know is in emotional distress or having a suicidal crisis, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 988. Crisis counselors are available 24-7, and you are worth the time it takes to get better.
The next person we'll talk about is Christopher Hayes Clarks, and this will actually be read by As the Raven Dreams. He was found dead on April 15th, 2023. April 15th, 2023. Christopher Hayes Clark. Austin police identified the man whose body was pulled from Lady Bird Lake on Saturday near Longhorn Dam. Officers found John Christopher Hayes Clark, 30, after responding to calls related to a possible dead body in the water in the 2700 block of Canterbury Street on April 15th at about 1.20 p.m. First responders performed a water rescue, after which Hayes Clark was pronounced dead at the scene. Police said they do not suspect foul play was involved in his death based on available information, but have also added that the investigation is still in the early stages. The police did not provide any further information at that time. Multiple people had called 911 and said that a suspect appeared to be deceased and was in the water, Austin Police Department Officer Michael Bullock said. Police did perform the water rescue and found 30-year-old John Christopher Hayes Clark. Loved ones of Christopher Hayes Clark said that he was a great father who left behind a 12-year-old boy. A bright light in my life and my son's life and in my family's life. And I just want to know what happened. I just want the world to know he didn't deserve this, Regan Apricio, the mother of Clark's child, said. Police responded to this area of the lake after multiple people had called 911. Quote, As of right now, nothing criminal has been seen. Quote, APD Public Information Officer Michael Bullock said that Saturday during a press conference. The medical examiner's office is still working to determine the cause of death. Aparicio and other loved ones of Hayes Clark want to see investigatory results more quickly. Longhorn Dam is not next to the area where the city increased safety measures following two recent drownings near Lady Bird Lake and Rainy Street. Police said, however, there is no evidence of foul play in these deaths. Increased patrols began two weeks ago. APD Assistant Chief Jeff Greenwald told KXAN that officers performed standard downtown duties like breaking up fights and, in one instance, helped a group of friends find their friend that they hadn't been able to find for a couple of hours. And the last person that we will be talking about is Maga Doggle. As the Raven Dreams will also be covering him. He was found in the lake June 27th, 2023. June 27th, 2023, Moga de Gaulle, Austin, Texas. Austin police identified the man found dead in Lady Bird Lake on Tuesday, June 27th, as Moga de Gaulle. This is the fifth body found in Lady Bird Lake in just six months. Police say that this case is not being investigated as a homicide and that the cause of death will be determined by the medical examiner's office. When officials arrived, they found a body in the water. The victim was male. Police said they didn't have any information on a name, race, age, or if the person was homeless, stating, quote, Too early for me to say anything about the manner of death, homicide, suspiciousness, anything like that, says Naus. APD encouraged people to stay safe while out on the water, stating that water can be inherently dangerous. So, we always want to be cognizant when we are along the waterway of that fact. If we're going to be on a boat, keep a personal flotation device on or readily accessible. The cause of death is unknown at this time, and the medical examiner will release that information, but it could take months. Now. In 2024, there has been a person found in the lake, but supposedly it was a female. And their information, I think they were found in the lake in February of 2024, and their info has not been released as of yet. Now, this is going to be just me talking about all of this and my opinions, and a lot of it will be alleged, but... I started kind of looking, and when I was going through all the research, it crossed my mind that what if, hear me out, I'm not sure what the orientation of these men were, but there were a lot of gay bars in that area. And what if the person that is doing this is attacking gay or bisexual men, 
or men they thought were gay because it is common practice for straight men to go into gay bars. You know, I mean, even for someone like me, because they're a lot more fun. And sometimes you have a gay friend and you go in there with your gay friend, but you're straight. It's just a normal thing that happens. It just makes me wonder. That's one of my theories. And then if you notice, a lot of these men were visitors. They were not residents of Austin. I meant, could this be someone trying to attack tourists? I meant, it would make it easier for it to be investigated because they're not from that area. I don't know. But I really feel that the police have dropped the ball. I feel they're finally starting to go, hmm, the last three deaths, they're, they're, they're still investigating, supposedly. But to be honest, I really feel like someone is doing this. I'm not sure exactly how they're doing it. But if you notice throughout the years, it jumps really high. More than five bodies a year now. And these bars have been there for years and years and years before any of this happened. This district has been there. The area where you go and you walk down the road and there's bars lining the street. And it's somewhere where you party, you know, and and restaurants and bars and and fun things to do. have been there for years, y'all. And if this is something that the lake never had, lighting and all this stuff, you would see more people drowning prior to this if it was a case of oh they got intoxicated and they went down to the lake and just fell off and drowned yeah that that does not add up at all people really and so do i feel in austin that there was someone drugging these people and either they're so drugged and they're doing it on purpose And they're ending up in the lake by themselves because they're so drugged out of their mind. Not the fault of their own. And they end up drowning. Or someone's drugging them and um, getting them into the lake somehow. Pulling them in and drowning them and making it seem like a natural drowning and nothing else happened to them. Also, it's heartbreaking because, you know, when I was talking to my husband about the whole gay bar thing, he said, also, you got to think about it. What if... You know, a lot of men are closeted and they do rendezvous in a, in a privately area. And what if, you know, someone's flirting with them and going, hey, you know, let's, I know a great place. Let's go down to the lake. There's no one there. We'll be able to have some, you know, romantic time with no one bothering us. And they force them down to the lake and then they course them into the water or some other way. Then they end up drowning them in the lake. That was a thought he had. And it makes sense, you know? If that is what's happening. But a lot of these men, you can't really tell. And they it wasn't ever, like, said, you know, their, orient, their sexual orientation. But you never know. If we knew all of these men, real sexual orientations or what they prefer or whatever... And that would be a big red flag. And I have no idea if the police even have thought about this, even to check into this. Because it seems like they don't give a damn and they're not checking into nothing. I think only two females have been found in the lake since all this started happening. But all of them are male. All these all these are men. And they're in a specific age range. And a lot of them are not from this area. They're just visiting And a lot of them are found where other bodies were found exactly the same way. And to me, that is not a a coincidence. It's just not. And since this area is not patrolled and it scares people in Austin, they are really terrified. And I'm terrified for them. To think that there is a modern day serial killer out there blows my mind. And just to think that they have not been found or nothing has been seen is crazy. And, you know, a lot of people, there have been talk that maybe it's the smiley face killer because the smiley face killer has never been found. And he would kill exactly the same way. Exactly the same way. But he would leave his trademark smiley face sticker or smiley face somewhere around the area of it's like his calling card or whatever they call it not a lot of these have actually found 
any of that. And you never know. He might have changed his mind and stopped putting a smiley face. I don't know, but to me, more than five deaths a year in the same lake, just all of a sudden, is not normal. It is not normal. It is not. And the police really need to get off their asses and do something because this is going to continue into this year. Already in February, one body found in the lake. That just blows my mind. We need to just cut this lake off. And also, I've also thought of what if it's something like paranormal or like a curse or something? They should call this lake Death Lake, to be honest. And it just seems like there's so many issues. And there have been other deaths in the lake. A lot more of other deaths in the lake. But they were really from the person was out there in a paddle boat or canoe or kayak and they drowned. And people saw them drowned. And they know how they died. It wasn't suspicious. It wasn't randomly in the middle of the night and they find them dead in the morning. It wasn't like that. So I did not put the, those people in here. I am mainly talking about the weird and mysterious deaths of Lady Bird Lake in Austin, Texas. And I am very sorry to all of the family that have lost amazing people in their lives. And they're not getting any justice. It breaks my heart. And especially people that are not from here and don't really know about the lake and everything else. It's important to put more fences up. It's important to, you know, they can put fences up and just leave the boat you know, certain areas opened, like the boat ramps and stuff like that, to keep people safe, to deter them from going to the edge and jumping in or whatever they want to say is happening. Uh, but I feel like there is a cover-up going on here. And allegedly, I have to say alleged because they are still investigating. I know that whoever is doing this, if they're out there, they're probably listening listening and getting off on all of the news articles and reliving the deaths and I just want to say you're disgusting and despicable. I hope that God and karma will come for you. I want to say that my condolences go to the family and you know leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel about it. What are your theories? Let's talk about it. If I left something big out, please let me know. If you're in Austin, Texas, please be careful. In the historic district area, the rainy street area, where all the bars and everything else is, please, please be careful. Keep tabs on your friends. Don't let them walk around by themselves. Do not let them go by themselves because they might end up in this lake. Thank you so much for As a Raven Dreams for helping me with this video today. There was just so much information and please go check him out. He's an amazing narrator. Please like and subscribe. Please be safe out there, y'all. Until next time. We know full well there's just time So is it wrong to dance this line? If your heart was full of love Could you give it up? Spare